creating logos, and more graphic design. Using your new web design skills, you can now build a site for yourself or for clients. But the other part of web design is the design bit. And in fact, this is another highly in-demand skill that it really pays to learn. You can learn web design, then you can create graphics that will help you sell products, and you can provide another incredible service. Go on to sites like Fiverr, Upwork, People Per Hour, etc. And you can expect to make a lot of money selling these skills. You'll never struggle for work if you can do this and offer web design and writing services. And working on your own logo is a great place to flex your muscle and learn the ropes. Good logo design. The key to good logo design will be to know your brand and what you want to communicate. The core part of any brand should be the mission statement. This is a statement of intent about what your brand aims to offer and achieve and how it hopes to do it. It's not just about what you sell, but rather, it's about that extra attention to detail and what sets you apart. A fitness site is one thing, but is this a fitness site about healthy living and good times? Or is this a fitness site about pumping iron and pushing harder? Is it a fitness site that's about bodyweight fitness and cool stunts? Apple isn't just a brand that makes computers. It's a brand that challenges norms and creates stunning products for artistic individuals that want to express themselves. And that's what makes people excited about Apple. Watch Simon Sinek's TED Talk on the Golden Circle. Consider this required watching for all businesses, in fact. You want to be more than just a company. You want to be a movement, something people can get behind. Because this will make them want to read your content, follow you on social media, and buy your products all the more. And the job of your logo is to communicate this perfectly. You can do this by thinking up related imagery. Why not create a mood board? A selection of different images that inspire you or that are related to the message you want to put across. Then try combining those images in different and unique ways to see if you can come up with something unique that way. Avoid cliché and try to be objective by surveying people to see if the brand expresses your business correctly. Then go to work making the logo. The tools. The tool you're going to use to create your logo is Adobe Illustrator. This is not negotiable. The reason you need Adobe Illustrator is because this is the industry standard for designers. Adobe Illustrator allows you to create vector files. And what these are, are files that work based on instructions about geometry, angles, and distances. And vector files tell the computer where to draw lines, what angles those lines should point in, and how long they should be. This means that you can zoom in and all the ratios and angles remain the same. There will be no loss of quality. It also means that the image can be edited at any time by dragging the individual lines, cutting bits off, etc. The opposite is a raster file, a JPEG or PNG. If someone hires you to make them a logo and you make it in Photoshop and give them a JPEG or PNG file, then they will likely laugh in your face. Using Illustrator is not terribly easy, but if you follow some YouTube tutorials, you should be able to grasp the basics. The key is to understand that those lines are what are making up all your images. These can be drawn individually and are called paths. You can then add nodes onto those lines called anchor points and drag those around to lengthen or alter the angle. By drawing multiple paths and having them intersect, you can then select them at the same time and choose to join those lines. Now they become the outline of a shape, and you can fill it or drag it around as a single element. More useful is the shape tool. This lets you draw squares, polygons, eclipses, and more from scratch. This becomes even more powerful if you use it in conjunction with the free draw tool and with a Pathfinder window. The Pathfinder allows you to do things like combine two separate shapes into a single one, to cut off, divide sections of a shape, and more. You can also transform your shapes using the transform option from the top menu as you might in any other draw tool. Combine these features together with a little extra watching and you can start to create some rather complex shapes. What's handy is that any wonky lines will get smoothed out for you. And you'll see guidelines as you drag things to help you find center points or to line up elements that are opposite each other on the screen. Create something unique this way and then choose a great font from a site like Font Squirrel and you have your logo. It will look much more professional than anything you would make with any other tool. Tip. Note that one of the best ways to ensure your logo design is good is to follow the KISS rule. Keep it simple, stupid. Simple design is generally better than busy design, in fact. And when coming up with elements for your website, try to keep in mind one more mantra. Communicate. Don't decorate. 
This means that you shouldn't add flowery flourishes just for the sake of it. Any additional dialogue or graphical element should be there for a purpose, whether that is to lead the eye through the UX or whether it is to point to something else important. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.